Hey everyone, my name is Pritam and you're watching Tech with Pri. Welcome to my channel and I'm back with another exciting technical video. And this is the 23rd video of our newly created technical series called ServiceNow Developer. As you know, we have started our journey to build our first custom application together, right? In my last two videos, I have already explained about different ServiceNow applications. Like we have learned about partner applications. We have learned what is custom application, right? And very importantly, how they are different. Also in the last video, I have explained to you about the scoped application, how private scope and global scopes are different, how they work, right? And lastly, I discussed about the namespace while building custom application, how the namespace is important. And trust me guys, those videos are very, very important and it would help you. Those knowledge would help you to build the custom application with me, right? So if you miss those video, don't worry, the link will be there in the description. And also you can find the link of the last video here on your screen. Okay. Now in today's video, we are going to take another very important step to building our custom application. So make sure you watch the full video to understand each and every concept. Again, I'm telling whatever we are discussing today, that's going to help a lot in this, in this building custom application journey. Okay. So let's see what we are going to learn from today's video. Okay. First, very importantly, before building the custom application, we need to know what is the business problem that we are working with. So the use case, so what is their current process? So how they are processing things? So we would understand that. And also we would see what are the challenges they are facing right now. That's the business problem, right? Then what is the desired outcome they are looking for, right? What the company is expecting from a service now developer, what kind of work uh, they are looking for. So each and everything we would see. And based on that only we would create our application, right? So if we don't understand how the company is currently working, how the process is working, what are the challenges they are facing and what is the outcome they are expecting, right? They are the client. So if you don't understand what the client is expecting from us, then what kind of development we are going to do, right? So that's why each and every step we are going to process and understand and then we'll build our custom application. After understanding these things, we would see the steps for the application development. What are the steps we need to follow? First, what does the application need to do or the process follow? Then who are going to use this custom application that we are building? Okay. How they are going to get benefits from this custom application? How do people interact with the application? And finally, inputs and outputs. And these things are very, very important. After completing this video, you would have a clear image that what we are going to do, we would start doing the other step. So being a developer, it's very important that you should have a clear picture of the outcome or the result that you are looking for, right? Based on that only, you would develop the application. So each and everything we would see, we would understand. So don't worry. Again, make sure to watch the full video to understand each and everything. All right. So let's start the video. I know you are very excited. So let's not waste any more time and let's see what is the business problem or the use case. So. Tech with Pre Technology. So this is the name of the company. I'm sorry. I love to use my own channel name, Tech with Pre. So this is the name of the company. Just suppose Tech with Pre Technology. And what they do? Uh, Tech with Pre is a company that manufactures AI powered devices for construction workers, such as like safety drones, uh, AR glasses, that's the augment reality, uh, smart hats, and wearable environmental sensors. Okay. Again, this is all fictional. <laughs> I have created this just to, you know, uh, give you a use case or idea how things are work in real world. Next, they receive orders from construction based clients through calls and emails. So the construction based companies, they reach out to the take with free over calls and emails for the devices. So when they need devices, so they order over the call and the emails. Order processing is currently managed through spreadsheet. So you understand it's a very old process they are following. So, so all the orders they get from the emails and calls. So they maintain it in a spreadsheet and the workflow involves approval from a release management group before outsource dispatch of devices. So before the device is dispatched to the customer or the client that they have requested for, they also need a management approval from the Tech3 itself. So that's the kind of a process that 
is currently working so we would see in the next slide uh, about the current process in more better way so you can see order placement how the order is placed in tech with three company client reach out via calls emails or other channels okay this is how uh, client reach out to the tech with free company for the order like we need this uh, smart hat maybe 10 piece, pieces of smart hat or wearable sensor 100 piece so something like that in this way okay and then order processing when they gets the order they manually entered this in the spreadsheet uh, by the device management team so we have a team called device management team inside of the tech with free company who are responsible to you know uh, get the order and you know updating it in a spreadsheet and stuff like that and then approval then the dm team that means the device management team okay i just use a shortcut sorry dm team emails the release management group for approval so release management group is responsible to giving the final approval before releasing the product right so that's the process the company follows and finally outsource team handles device dispatch so the dispatch or the outsource team is there so they devise the dispatch based on the approval so if it is approved then the dispatch done in a following different process right so this is the current process of the company of the manufacturing company take with pre okay very good now very importantly what are the challenges they are facing first manual order processing using spreadsheets is inefficient and has a high risk of errors like i was talking and it's pretty understandable right so you all know like storing things in a spreadsheet is now very much old stuff when we have so much important technology with us like tools like service now salesforce right so we should not use spreadsheet anymore so that's the number one issue uh, number of challenge number one challenge they are facing a uh, second lacking a central system uh, make it challenging to track device location and maintain real time communication with the clients so as they do not have a dashboard or you know they even can't check the tech with free company the device management company doesn't you know properly check that how many orders are coming and they even cannot communicate with the client properly lots of problem they're having because of lacking of a central system okay third email based approvals delays deliver device delivery so like we have just seen the device management team or the dm team has to send the email to the release team for the approval so this email based approvals takes a lot of time okay this is not automated and finally difficulty collecting and analyzing client feedbacks on device slowing down the product improvement so again this is a problem of maintaining things in a spreadsheet right and again it becomes very challenging from the higher management to see how the whole process is going right so these are the challenges is facing by the tech with free company now suppose the owner of the tech with free company which is me <laughs> so they have discussed in a board meeting that no this cannot go down that we have to switch in a modern way we have to use such application that would help us to do a lot of things we have to spend some money but we have to make sure that the quality of our product should stay at the top right and there is a competitive market so other companies are growing also at the same time so tech with free company doesn't want to lose any of their construction client right so what the desired outcome so what is the outcome they are looking for so the desired outcome a single location where client can submit requests for from for different devices right so right now emails and calls is the only way but instead of that tech with free client they are looking for a single location where client can submit requests from different for different devices right second streamlined and automated order processing system after the request has been read so they want to do this order processing system like of kind of a automated stuff so that it can save a lot of time and manual efforts then faster approval and order fulfillment lead time so again very very important so after certain step automatically approval should go to the proper person there should not be any delay so again this could be a automated process uh, that would help to save a lot of time and make a good user experience sending automatic email notification to the customer so about the updates about the like your order has been shipped or delivered like we get from amazon or flipkart right so those same kind of things that we are trying to do here take with pretty team is expecting for right centralized dashboard to manage different things like we were discussing in the last uh, in the last slide that uh, there is no centralized system so because of that the management the dm team the release management team all of them they are unable to track the orders properly because 
all those are in spreadsheet right they are unable to see order details like how many orders are coming per day how many uh, time it is taking to dispatch whether everything is uh, working fine or not like a dashboard things they are missing it here and finally improve request satisfaction with process and fulfillment request fulfillment so these are the outcome they are looking for now is this possible to build this custom application in service now is it possible or not now being a developer you have to make a decision so we already have seen in my uh, you know in the first video of this custom application that what are the scenario that you should consider for a custom application now before I answer this question, we are going to need some more information from the tech with pre client, right? And we are going to ask those questions and we would see what kind of answers that we are getting from the client. Let's see what are those questions. So steps for application development. What does the application need to do or process flow that we are going to learn? Who are going to use this custom application? How they are going to get benefits from this custom application if we create that? how do people interact with the application and what is the input and output let's see all of these things in detail process flow so what does the application need to do right the application that we are going to build so client place an order through the online portal okay so no more dependency on emails and calls customer or client can directly place an order from the online portal we can think of service catalog right in service now just a hint Order is automatically routed to the device management team for review. Again, no manual intervention. Team checks inventory availability and sends an approval request to the release management group. So the device management uh, group checks all those things if inventory is available. I mean, the devices are available for order and then sends it to the release management group, right? Upon approval, once it is approved, the app generates a dispatch order automatically for the device and sends it to the dispatch management team right now client receives a notification for the order the order states and stuff email sent to the different team from several different condition that we will discuss uh, throughout the development video right who are those teams so what kind of emails that we can send right we can later decide that and finally visualizing the matrix over report and dashboard so our custom application should be able to do all of these things now we can understand that yes that's something it's possible to build in service now but still we need to ask few more questions next question who are going to use this application so it's very important that we need to know who are the people that are going to use this application based on that we can create user personas right in simple way different user role that we can create because not each and every person or the team will have the same access let me show you for the example external people who would be the clients or the customer you can see potentially for orders placement status updates and support they would have limited access so the clients they are who are placing the order the, from the construction company they don't need to see from which team to which team it is going right who are the person is working right so they would only able to order stuff and see the updates and support that's why they would have limited access and we would control that by giving roles you would understand that when i'll implement it so again it's going to be very very interesting now see what are the internal teams that are available who are going to use this application definitely the device management team uh, the DM team, release management team or the RM team, uh, they are the approvers, right? And the dispatch management team would be responsible to dispatch these uh, devices to the client, right? And finally, there would be system administrator who would, you know, after our building our application, they, they would manage application settings, user permissions and access controls because you, you're going to need certain kind of uh, security admin rights. Uh, for the system admin to manage the ACL stuff so other form configuration and other different stuff that would be done by the system administrator right understandable now next how they are going to get benefits from them from this custom application right first the device management team increased efficiency so it would reduce the manual data entry like they used to do over the spreadsheet so the order processing would be faster and it would be streamlined approvals improved visibility real-time device status and the location better inventory management 
I hope you are getting a clear picture or clear idea that what we are going to do, what we are going to develop based on a real time scenario, guys. Again, I'm telling very, very important to understand the business problem. What are the benefits? Who are the users so that you can confident to do the development of the custom application? OK, so that's what we are doing. These are very, very important. Without understanding these steps, development is not possible. Next, for the release management group, the approvers group, uh, simplified approvals again, approvals assigned dynamically and appropriately. And right, then the dispatch management team, easier dispatch process, generate and manage dispatch orders for approved devices. And we would configure that, don't worry. Next, leadership, how the leadership is going to get the benefit, the most important persons of the company, like right? the leadership or the group of directors, right? So reduce cost, improved efficiency, higher client satisfaction. On the top level, the leadership team would focus on this automation of work and real time visibility of status through reports and dashboard. So they need reports like a weekly report, monthly report. We would see how we can configure this uh, in the help of scheduling report. And so they are going to see the stats and reports, how it's working and stuff like that. So all these people will get benefit from our custom application. How do people will interact with our application, with the custom application that you're building? Very importantly, both mobile and desktop or laptop devices they are going to use. However, we are going to, uh, you know, develop it uh, in the ServiceNow Studio for the laptop or desktop devices as of now. But for the mobile, we can target it future. Okay, so this application, this uh, use case will explore a lot in future. So again, if you're not subscribers, subscribe my channel right now. Next, intuitive design for ease of use. So definitely the uh, design that we are going to create that has to be user friendly so that, you know, no one gets confused, stuff like that. OK, now lastly, what are the inputs? So what would be the data source in our custom application? We need data. So data is everything that we are going to deal with. So first, the existing spreadsheet uh, for order and device data. So already they are storing all those information in a spreadsheet or we can use that as a data source, as an input data source in our ServiceNow custom application. Next, so with the help of the form, we can input data right in the table that we are going to create uh, for our application. That is also another option. And definitely with the help of service catalog, external user can directly raise the request. And output, if I talk about what kind of output this email, this application will generate. So it would generate some email, you know, for different phases to different teams that we will work it out when we'll work. Next, report and schedule report. It would send the report to the, you know, like I was discussing to the uh, top level to the management, right? So that they can get through it and understand how the comp how it is improving or not and stuff like that. So this is all about the understanding about the business requirements. We have understood the business problem. We have understood the use case. We got all the answers of our question. Now, in the next video, what we are going to do? Next video, we will define the data model. Now, the next step would be to work with the data model. That means working with the tables. So what are the tables that we are going to use? Are we going to extend some table? Or we will create custom table without extending anything? What would be the different fields? So what would be the other table that we are going to use for our reference field? And we would start creating our application practically in the Studio app in ServiceNow. So you would get to know about Studio application also. So make sure again to watch the next video. Again, trust me, this series would help you a lot to clear your CAD examination because all the concepts that we are going to do, everything is important for the CAD exam, right? Again, another use case I'm going to work, another advanced use case I'm going to work and the video will be uploaded for the members uh, and it would be started by end of this month in the same way in the part by part. So again, if you want to explore it, uh, if you want to practice that uh, complex use case, then again, you can join my channel. It's a very limited subscription charge. Again, welcome in my membership. If you have any doubt in this video, ask me in the comment section, like the video if you find it helpful, share it with your friends and families so that it can reach out to many people. Bye-bye, take care, see you in my next video.